TBSW episode 106. What's going on with Google? Dutch government scandal. Meagerang noodles. Historic domino effects. Kazoo hero makeup artist. And Congolese dandies. Coming up on the B side word. The B side word. Welcome to the B side word. We are a group of friends from around the world where we share our thoughts and opinions on interesting articles. I am Devon and I'm here with Emma. Hello. I'm here with CJ. Hello. And I'm here with Alex. Ahoy. What's happening, peeps? What's up? What's up? What's the go? Well, there's some bad news, of sad what? news for me. What? One of my heroes that I've never ever met that's <laughs> really filled me up <laughs> for a lot of my life. The maker of Meagering. These um, instant noodles in mm-hmm. Australia, mm-hmm. or oh, around the world, Indonesian noodles. Um, the ma- the creator of Migarang has died, and it's yes. it's really sad. Yes, I feel it's sad. I feel like a part of me has died because well, was you should have part. had Migarang noodles for dinner. Uh, can we have a two minute silence? Oh, for the two minute noodles. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, hey, hey, hey! Don't noodles? disrupt the two-minute noodles. <laughs> don't disrupt the two-minute noodles. I mean, <laughs> silence. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Um, okay. I'm just concerned at the moment. If we, right. it's a two-minute article, right? And if we yeah. have a two-minute silence, <laughs> is that the whole article just yeah. gone? Yeah. 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 <laughs> have you Have you ever had um, migarang at all? No. No. Never, never heard of them. Oh, okay. I hadn't right. heard so, of them until I met Dev. Um, but Are they're we actually talking delicious. Like packet, yeah, packet, packet noodles, cup of noodles, or pack noodles, packet pack noodles with uh, all the flavouring. Yeah, quickly Google it. Pack noodles. The creator Nunuk Nuraimi. It's actually fried fried noodles. Well, is... yeah, but we don't usually fry them, do we? No, we don't. Okay, okay. Now that he died, are they still making them? Yeah. Yes. So he this has been a brand for nearly thirty years. Um or he's worked there for nearly thirty years, I don't know. Um or she actually, she's fifty nine years old. These noodles started in Indonesia, but they are massive throughout Southeast Asia, Australia and Nigeria. I reckon a lot of um uni students have survived of this of these noodles. I didn't used to like them, but I've just got I've just like. You still grown. don't like them? No, I do actually. Do you, uh, yeah. With a with a do fried you egg. With egg. Yeah, yes. with a fried egg. With a fried egg. And it has to be yeah, runny yolk. Every single picture on Google Images <laughs> of these noodles has yeah. an egg with. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the egg has to be runny. But yeah, it's just a sad day, and I'm like, she was a big part. Like it's yeah. big part of my uh, youth, migraine. Thank you for the noodles. Oh. <laughs> There's loads of different flavors, but the original's still the the fave. What on earth is going on with Google? What on earth? Have you heard TJ? <laughs> no. What De- happened? Zans? I've I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, well, in that case, I thought this was the big article I've, 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 that you were talking I've heard about of Google. before. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> so Alexander goes, are we talking about the biggest news of the week? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Thinking this was it. He's not even heard about this. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know so what see, you were talking about. I, I, I was assuming this was the big, the big news, right? I thought But it maybe is. I was incorrect. <laughs> well, no. Can I, can so, I ask, wait, can I, mm. CJ, do you use Google a lot? Yeah. Like all the time? I'm using it now to, to look up articles. Right. So tell him the news then. So I think this is only... A, affecting Australia. Google says it will shut down its its search engine in Australia if a current controversial bill becomes law. Now this I did hear about this. Oh you did? Yeah. So this was the bill. bill What's the bill? This bill is designed to benefit the news media basically. So what would happen is, well, currently, 
I guess Google, everyone searches for news articles and all the news media places feel like they're missing out on revenue, right? And they want a bit of the coin, basically. And they're trying to Mm -hmm. pass this code so that I think they basically want Google to pay them the rights to... Okay, to, to search so Google's doing, the wor- Google's doing the work and getting yeah. the articles out there and they're going to have to, ta- to um, give a cut to people whose news no one reads anymore because it's basically no one buys a newspaper anymore. Yeah, well, no one does buy the... But that's because of the yeah, but search Google, engines, right? Yeah, Google would also not exist if it didn't have websites to direct you to. That'd be the worst search engine in the world if you just search <laughs> for things and then couldn't go onto actual websites. <laughs> yes. Oh, so that exists. That's nice to know. <laughs> the Australian Managing Director, Mel Silver, said the draft legis- re- legislation, the draft one, remains unworkable and breaking um, the, the way and the habit of all our, the users in Australia would be not catastrophic, but just ridiculous because google have basically said if you don't amend this law that you're looking to impose we will get rid of your search engine how crazy would it be if there was no google i mean is um does yahoo and um bing still work as search engines they're the- awful <laughs> awful do you know they why exist, I, and how i know that's the thing, like- because at work they i heard they're awful default. from someone i can't remember mm. who but because on Microsoft, may- that comes up as the default, Bing, um, or the the however they've got it set up at work, it comes up as the default. And whenever I search, let's say a typical thing I would search is hire car in, and then I put the suburb, right? Never gives me any information, ever. If you switch it to Google, put the same, you get a list of all the hire cars in that suburb, in or around that suburb. So and that's I'm just what like, Alexander are you was saying. kidding me? That's what Alexander was saying. What? You, you search something and it doesn't take you to the website. Never. <laughs> that is it's, the worst search engine it's the ever. the most frustrating <laughs> thing in the world. Um, so basically, uh, they, the news are based, Google is saying if this, was, if this law was to pass, then you would have to pay. I don't know if they're saying the general users would have to pay for snippets or to be redirected to news articles. Uh, so general, they wait, wait. The general users like us. Well, this is it. Well, didn't you. specify. Yeah, it didn't specify. This is not going to be good. It said the company's <laughs> main concern with the pr- proposal, which I'm presuming the company being Google, is that it would require payments simply for links and snippets just to news results in search. So I don't know if payments so, from them or payments uh, from us. I'm not sure. It sounds like Google are passing the buck of the payment to the user. Not that it actually would cost you to click on it, but it would cost Google the right to have that there. And Google is saying, well, we're not paying it. So that means the user would have to pay it. Well, they're saying that, and that wouldn't happen. So they would just shut the system down. So they have basically said, and it says Google and Facebook have been fighting with publishers for years over how they display their content, um, media companies, um, basically saying that Google should pay them for the privilege. And yeah, so the new legislation basically allow certain media outlets to bargain either individually or as a collective with both Facebook and Google. And if they can't reach the agreement within three months, according to Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, they then it's all it's all done. Now, here's the thing. Prime Minister of Australia, ScoMo, Scott Morrison, I feel like he's adding fuel to the fire because guess what he said? Mm. Let me be clear. Why did he buy, buy, buy a can of petrol? He said, let me be clear. Australia makes our rules for things you can do in Australia. That's done in our parliament. It's done by our government. And that's how things work in Australia. And people who want to work with that in Australia, you're very welcome. But we don't respond to threats. So yeah, I don't think he under actually understands what the what um the media people want. Maybe not. Well, I don't know. So I guess like think of this. Uh, put it in out outside the internet. Think of real people. If you were 
a business and there was someone who promoted your business, they went around promoting your business. Now imagine that person who's promoting your business. They had no affiliation to you, like they were they were just doing it off their own back. But they were earning significantly more money than you were just by promoting your business. Like you would probably be like, hold on a second you can't like we're gonna do that or you can't do that or we deserve some of the money or so like you're making yeah. money because of our business oh um, their product right and that, that's essentially what google it like google as a it's a service mm. that directs you to other things like it, it itself is useless like the only reason it works is because so many people use it which means then they can do ads and things like that and they get loads of data and they just sell the data um so I I can't I get it I get why uh, this is a thing. So you and think- I think well I I get it in a sense of like businesses are definitely losing money because Google exists because you now have more variety more exposure. Because a lot of these business a lot of these businesses wouldn't be around and have as much advertising as they do if it wasn't for Google. But you have to pay for Google Ads. Yeah, it's not free. Hold on. But then you said it is advertising like businesses. Yeah, you yeah, got to pay Google, for it. When I say Google promotes the businesses in the sense of it's on their set. Like if you, you if you come up in a search, you're there. Yeah. But you have to pay for if you want to advertise in it or anything. You have to pay for that. Mm. Um, you can pay to get higher up in the search results. Like there's loads of things you can do that cost you money to be able to yeah. be seen by Google. Um, and these are situations where because of globalization just in general you would have had that business prior to because that people would have had a search engine to go and look for that business so just inherently you would have absorbed that business because of your area local surroundings but now especially if you're a physically located business and news is a little bit different but even in that sense news historically is a physically located business isn't it it's you give news to the people in your area but now news is a global thing you're in a situation where if I want to get news about... I Like, I can get news about what's going on in the UK without going to a single UK news station. Yeah. Huh. So it's, it's a... Yeah. But I will say this. If you if you guys do lose Google, Yahoo and Bing or whatever, one of them will become your main provider. And it will suck for a while, but it will get better pretty quickly. Imagine all the stuff that we'd miss out on because we wouldn't be able to <laughs> actually search it. Would it be better not having access would, yeah. to everything? Oh. Hmm. Depends what you need it for. For my job, it would suck. For schooling, mm. I'm not sure. <laughs> In um, schooling, you get half the information. <laughs> no, <a> Yahoo. <laughs> uh. Well, Google are proposing some changes to this bill, which are news showcase that is a program launched by google last year and it pays or it aims to pay publishers more than one billion dollars over the next three years they want to formalize it and expand it into australia it's currently not here and they apparently google already pays seven publishers in the country for content by the way um they also want to amend a requirement that would force google to notify publishers about changes in its algorithm saying it should do so only to make sure publishers are able to respond to changes that affect them. But basically, they've said that um, there is a clear pathway to a fair and workable code. This is what the Australian minister said. Um, withdrawing our services, and they said, withdrawing our services from Australia is the last thing that they want to happen, especially when there's another way forward. So they're kind of at a standstill. So we'll see what happens. Do you know, so, when, um, do you know when Google uh, uh, started? No. 95, wasn't it? No. 98. 98. Do you remember what you used before Google? Do you remember when Ask Google Jeeves. was introduced? Ask Jeeves. Was it Internet Explorer? Yeah, I but... used... Internet Explorer's a browser. I used... Ask... I was Isn't talking about this... Thing? So I was talking about this the other day. I used mm. Ask Jeeves. Like, I was still using mm. Ask Jeeves. More so as a joke. But it was still around when I did my GCSEs when I was 16 years old. Like Google, even though it's been around since 98, wasn't like the leader in search engines for no. a while. Yeah. Because we, we used Bing, we used uh, Lycos, 
We wow. used Yahoo, Ask Cheese, like all these ones. Oh, this one. I just put. What the hell is Ask Jeeves? I just put. I just brought up Ask Jeeves and it's still around. No, that's Ask. That's Ask.com. I think yeah. Ask Jeeves is AskJeeves.net. Oh. Uh, used, a, good I, fil- I, a, a film came up which looks really good called Judas and the Black oh, it Messiah. Rebranded, it rebranded as Ask, actually. Yeah, I think it rebranded, yeah. But they Ask Jeeves, their, their mascot used to be this waiter, like a butler, and he was... That's yeah. right. You yeah. Ask Jeeves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard of a man called Katsuhiro? No. I've heard of katsu curry. But... <laughs> katsu chicken. Is that, the, is that the guy from the Hero TV series? Mm, Hero Nakamura. No, 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 no. no. Oh! oh yeah. No. yeah! Can I just interject? Yeah. I love Japanese names. That's all. Well... <laughs> That was extremely random. <laughs> I just, I, I, I love Japanese names. They're really simple and... Are they? What do you mean simple? It's Katsu. Like, Katsu's not like Bob. Bob is simple. B-O-B. I think their names are easy katsu. to pronounce, really simple, but They awesome. mean a lot, I think. I love them. Yeah, that's all. This uh, guy, ha- Katsu Hiro is a makeup and hairstyling artist. Mm-hmm. And he won his second... Oh, that's... W- I, I have heard of him because he does my hair. <laughs> and uh, he won his uh, <laughs> second Oscar. The reason why I'm bringing this guy up because he's very, very talented. Hmm. And I was... Okay. Uh, if you look up if you look up his name, K-A-Z-U-H-I-R-O, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and you look at some of his work, they look... So realistic. Oh, wait, is this? Th- that's, yeah, look at Abraham Lincoln. Oh, here. Yeah, that's him. Look at Abraham Lincoln. Look how realistic. W- wait, what's it made from? I'm not sure what it made, but he uses, um, he, it, it's, he uses all products to make it lifelike to the what? point, like you see the whiskers. Look at this. The, the, yeah, look at the mustache on that bloke. That guy is a, is a doll. This is creepy. No. I'm looking at one of I don't know who this is, but that's wild. Uh, Dick, With an afro, Dick Smith maybe. Um, Dick Smith. Oh look, yeah, that one there. Looking there. What the Aus- Australian Dick Smith? Oh, I don't know. Oh, it looks like him. I'm not sure. But this guy old... is so extremely talented, and 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 the amount of work he puts in. It's unbelievable. That's wild. So he won his second okay, Oscar for the... I, 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 um, just, just just to say, I put katsu in, right? Yeah. And I got katsu chicken. <laughs> yeah, you put it's K-A-Z-U. K-A-Z-U. Oh, okay. I'm not going to lie, this chicken looks bloody good too. <laughs> this? I'll tell <laughs> no. you what, Ma- Madam Two Swords need to hire this guy because I this know, is right? significantly better than this. <laughs> He's awesome. Look, oh, it was Jimi Hendrix. Look at his version of Jimi Hendrix. Can you look how long it takes for him to recreate? Oh. Well, he won the second Oscar for the show or movie, Bombshell, biographical drama about a group of female Fox News employees who set out to expose the sexual harassment by the company CEO. But yes, I will have a look. So when I... Yeah, I'm I'm looking at at him, him now. When I see things like this, when I see artists' work in general, more specifically people who do human-based art or real, real life-based art, yeah, and you understand the level of detail that has to go into it, and the level of intricacy that's involved in that detail, I just wonder what life is like through their eyes because they must see eh? things that I don't. Like they have yeah. to. The like intricacies they, they are, though, right? Yeah, like they can't be looking at the world in the same way that I'm looking at it because there's no way I would ever think... T- it's Katsu Hero Otomoto, right? No. K- K-A-Z-U. Okay. 
And then H I I. I got a, I got a different guy that does a similar thing. Okay. A oh, okay, maybe. Z U H I R O. H R. No, I. H I. It's only four letters. <laughs> <laughs> H I R O. He okay. is a contemporary hyperrealist sculptor, living and working wow. in LA. This Jimi Hendrix one is nuts. Are you impressed, CJ? Okay, uh, uh, to be honest with you, I'm more impressed with the chicken. You're more impressed with the chicken? <laughs> the chicken looked brilliant, man. I'm hungry. I didn't see how long it takes, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> have you just... seen have you seen these uh models do you think they're really good cj yeah they actually are really good man like the, the, the girl from um dodgeball with the one eyebrow that looks pretty freaking that looks pretty good oh what are you talking about? he did oh you know um men in black yeah you know yeah. the oh, oh, guy oh. <laughs> you know you know what i mean yeah, yeah, I don't know what his character. <laughs> he did his makeup. This... I'm sure he would have done like a lot of movies. This guy, he, he would have. He looks quite talented. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I have no idea you described that guy. I don't know what his character's name. I just, I, I just wanted the. Bug. Uh, Who's the bug? I wanted to highlight the. I don't know. Just wait. This is the way he talks. So he goes. This was the movie, right? He was talking about who was in the film, uh, Charlize Theron, Megan Kelly, uh, I don't know who else. So he's saying, he goes. This is Bombshell the movie? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, the most important parts come down to a couple of key features. Giving Charlize Theron, uh, giving Theron Kelly's square angular jaw, adding Kelly's heavier eyelid to Theron's big eyes, and probably most visibly, getting the nose just right, slightly turned up. He put like nose plugs in and changed the shape of their jawline and their eyelids oh, and everything wow. for the movie. Wow. Wow. I like he his... Uses, I was going to say, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie's printer. still on a pretty attractive woman. I like his Salvador Dali sculpture. So, yeah, he like made her big nostrils smaller somehow, he said. Oh, man. Mmm, chicken. Finessing eyelids. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. If you if you look him up, K A Z U, not K A T Z U, because if you make that mistake, you'll find chicken instead of the artist. If you're interested And then and then you're gonna feel like chicken? Yeah. And, and then so like, or you're gonna be like you want some nice chicken with some chili sauce <laughs> or some nice rice. <laughs> and like, you know, that's all you're gonna think about. <laughs> Uh, hmm, chicken. <laughs> I feel like chicken tonight. Like chicken tonight. Okay, this next article is about the domino effect. The domino effect being where one event could be a minuscule event can trigger another event, can trigger another event. And it's this whole hurricaning, snowballing, massive effect that can change, change history as change we know history. it, right? This article is going to take us through some of those domino effects that have changed history as we know it today. So so the reason why I, I put this article in is because um, I was watching this video of this man explaining that... Um, that after World War II, Japanese were banned from creating airplanes. Okay. So instead of creating airplanes, they decided to make motorbikes and cars and really, really um, perfect how, they, how motorcycles are made and how cars are made. The guy then proceeded to ask a question. Imagine if they weren't banned at making aeroplanes. What kind of aeroplanes or what kind of um, what kind of uh, aircrafts would be created right now because of their determined perfection in how to create things? Oh. And imagine... Yeah, no, 
Yeah, they would have made some pretty cool stuff. The Honda Jet. The Honda Jet. And that got me thinking about other things like, um, and I couldn't think of anything, but in history, if someone was so good at something but was stopped at doing that, where would we actually be in in, in, in the- like wasn't BMW actually like um, making helicopters in World War Two? What? And then after World War Two, they started making cars. I'm not was sure. that Mercedes Benz? I think that was. I'm so not that sure. wasn't the Honda thing. That was different, was it? Wow, I don't yeah, know. I'm sure, like, like also with BMW or Mercedes Benz, they were making helicopters, uh, military stuff for Germany, and after World War Two, they've changed their business into also automobiles. Oh, there you go. Let's go through some of these, right? History changing domino effect, initial reaction change event things. Ready? <laughs> so, <laughs> so does anybody remember the Super Bowl event with Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson? The boob. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you are 100% correct. Let, ding, 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 let, ding, ding. Let's, let's just say what it is. So apparently, apparently, because of that performance, there were two people that were trying to find a video, like a replay. They wanted to like, wait, what? And and watch it, right, online. (laughs) They had no luck. (laughs) Oh, three guys. These three guys were working for... It's three guys. These Still three guys were working for PayPal. Who live with their mum's house? Oh, wow. They were working for PayPal. They quit PayPal and decided to create a video streaming website. That site was finally created in 2005 and was YouTube. <laughs> uh, so you're they're saying me. that like, it's Justin Timberlake and guys, Janet Jackson the boobie, nipple slip YouTube. created YouTube. <laughs> oh, shit. Isn't that insane? That's insane. YouTube, we would not be on YouTube right now if Janet Jackson didn't take a nipple out. Right. We owe it all. No, she, didn't, she didn't take a nipple out. She didn't take, a she didn't out. take Justin it. Tim, it like, just slipped. And got stuck on her dress and it came out. No, no. She, she got it out. Here's a really interesting one. The fall of the Aztec and Incan empires are responsible for a mini ice age, which ended around 1750. You want to know how? Yes. So, though the the Aztec and Incan empires fell, Mm -hmm. caused in part by the conquistadors, Mm. this led to massive reforestation in areas that were once designated for cities and farmland, right, Mm -hmm. that had been cleared for crops and animals. So reforestation. This led to a massive fall in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which brought about 200 years of excessively cold winters, leading to a mini ice age in Europe, ending around 1750. Are you serious? So we can't be completely carbon free. We still have to have some sort of pollution to keep us hot. Mm. Well, that's, so the car, the Global warming is the idea of the atmospheric temperature rising, which if you raise the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere by 1%, however much, if it it can change it by like a significant amount, but it is tiny fractions of carbon dioxide that does this. Yeah, like a 1% increase will tip us over the edge in the wrong way. And a 1% decrease would probably do the same. Oh, this is this is. Wow. But it takes a lot. Talk it takes a lot to change. Talk about having 1%. to have the temperature 1%. gauge on the right system. Mm, they reckon that this one could raise to three percent. That's what they're scared about. Um, <laughs> I don't know if this is a bit of a push as well. If the producers from the 2012 writers' strike uh, would have just written, then Donald Trump wouldn't have been president. <laughs> so oh, that's a bit of a stretch because they said they weren't a way that long. Sorry, 2007, <laughs> the Writers Guild of America went on strike. They didn't write for four months. This led to TV shows relying on stuff that didn't need writing for <laughs> game shows, reality shows. <laughs> um, they the so, so what, what you're saying is the Kardashians wouldn't be as rich and famous as they are now. They didn't start to for that writer strike. Yeah, they started later, but. Don't talk about the yeah, Kardashians, but, but, CJ. Don't talk about the Kardashians. Emma will fight but, you for but, it. But, but then, but then they noticed that, that this kind of 
Uh, you, um, uh, lifestyle TV works. I'm gonna bring so it. So then they created the Kardashians. I just want everyone oh. to know that CJ's bringing it on himself, and so, that, uh, <laughs> the I will be at his funeral. <laughs> the Apprentice. They decided to make it the Celebrity Apprentice. Yeah. This sword, this sword, this got twice as high as ratings as the previous one. Led to Donald Trump yeah, being... Yeah, but they never had any real celebrities. Led to Daniel, Donald Trump being a mainstay on TV networks. Led to the presidency because of his popularity. I promise you he didn't become president because of that TV show. Alexander, you've been very, very quiet. This domino effect, you, you it's just... You don't... You don't it's I found, not interesting. I found an interesting one. Go. George Lucas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We all know George Lucas? Yeah. So, yeah, director yeah. or producer. Director. Mm-hmm. S- Star Wars. Wars. George Lucas really wanted to make a Howard the Duck movie. And after Return of the Jedi, he had the pull to do it. So he did. But Howard the, oh Duck, my lost, God. Oh. Howard the Duck lost him so much money that he ended up having to sell the animation part of Lucas Films. And who did he sell it to? Well, he sold it to Steve Jobs. And Steve Jobs turned that into Pixar. And then the funny part about that is Pixar was then sold to Disney, who bought the rest of Lucasfilms. <laughs> oh. Wait, Steve Jobs <laughs> so made Howard Pixar? So Howard the Duck lost George Lucas, Lucasfilms, to Disney. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but, but, but Disney bought um, Lucasfilms anyway. That's what I was saying. Yeah. But they, he had there was an animation <laughs> side to it. Which he sold to Steve Jobs, and Steve Jobs off that created Pixar, like turned that into Pic- what well, is Pixar. But Steve Jobs also sold Pixar to Disney, and Disney bought the then bought the rest of Lucasfilms. Let's let's be honest. If it was successful, Disney probably still would have bought it anyway. <laughs> you know, well, um, he, who's he Harry the Duck? Sell it. Yeah, Harry but like um. He, he doesn't. He didn't have to sell Lucas Films. But he, I mean, the the difference being, if he didn't sell the animation side of Lucas, like if he didn't make <laughs> Howard the Duck and didn't lose all that money, he probably would be doing a lot of different things. Which means he may not have ended up selling Lucas Films at all. Yeah, but he would have had the animation and the Lucas Films part, and he probably would have sold them as a package. Why? I don't know. I, anyways, have you seen <laughs> Howard the Duck? No. Yeah, I have. <laughs> he is horrible. It was such a shit movie. <laughs> you actually watched it? Yeah. <laughs> I've never even heard of that. I don't know what's more funny. I am not. I'm not going to lie to you. I can't remember what it's about. It was like 20 something years ago. <laughs> And after I watched it, after I watched it, I'm like, I'm never watching this shit again. I cannot so tell you the storyline. I it was like a horny duck or some Sci-fi shit. Sci-fi action, this 1986. <laughs> can you I, put? I, can you put? Um, can you back? I do can like. You put... mm-hmm. Press that. Look at that one. This. I do. Yeah, I do like. Kinda? I do like the Star Trek led to the Obama presidency one. I like that too. Um, I'm seeing this Hold in my on. Reddit feed, so I don't. How does it. Star Trek? Lead to the Obama All right, Star Trek. I, I got you on this one. So, Star Trek Voyager. Um, it yeah. it wasn't that well received as much as previous Star Treks. So, in 1997, the producers decided to add a new character in an attempt to boost ratings, and this was the character Seven of Nine. I don't know if you remember Seven of Nine, but very attractive woman. Yeah, I do actually. Um, so Seven of Nine. His name was- is Jerry Ryan was played by Jerry Ryan, this actress, who, because of the role, had to have a lot of frequent separations from her husband, Jack Ryan. And due to her acting schedule, it was something that contributed heavily to their decision to divorce in 1999. Now, in 2004, Jack Ryan became the Republican nominee for the open Senate seat in Illinois, which is where he was running against Obama for that Senate seat. And during the campaign, the proceedings from that same divorce became public and it contained details of his sex life that didn't make him look good. This became a scandal that forced him to drop out, which meant the Republicans had to just pick some random person to then 
be against Obama, which led to Obama winning that Senate race in a landslide victory, which propelled him to be able to have a big national stage to run for the presidency, um, mm. which he then went on to win. Had he had Jack Ryan not have had to drop out, had that scandal not have come out, Mm-hmm. then it's not even it's not even certain whether Obama would have even won the Senate seat and he never would have run yeah. the presidency. Oh. Mm-hmm. So Star That's Trek good crazy. contributed to a presidency, uh, an Obama presidency. Mm-hmm. So we've got to thank Star Trek, Janet Jackson's um, s- slip nip. Mm-hmm. Nipple slip. Nipple slip. <laughs> Jap- Japan's ban from building planes. Mm-hmm. And um, the other good one was the, which one was it? Genghis Khan, maybe? No. Tuberculosis? No. no. Uh, Alexander's one. Oh, no, the mini, mini ice age. Freeze. Oh, no, we don't really have to thank for that because that happened yeah. ages ago. Is there... And also, malaria is responsible for the creation of gin and tonic as well. Just thought I'd drop that in. <laughs> this article, I love it for some reason. I want you guys to bring it up and we'll post pictures. So these, this is the Congolese dandies. That is the dandies of the Congo. So since the 1920s, They call them the sapeurs of the Congo have been making statements with their fashion sense on the streets of Brazzaville and Kinshasa. That's sick names. Yeah. Um, I guess this photographer maybe, Tariq Zaidi, went to their communities to take some photos. So he shot the sapeurs, the sapeuses, and the younger mini sapes or sap is, I don't know, at their homes and found a little bit more about them. Can you guys bring up a picture? I just want to get your reaction. Mate, some of these suits are freaking nuts. Yeah. They're nuts, eh? And they, they rock I them. Like this, oh, I, like, I like this old bloke. He looks cool. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Can you like, show like, a couple like of them? A swa- like a suave grandpa. So... <laughs> The Are streets- we going to dress like that, Sage, when we get older? No. Oh. So this street, imagine- so you're in well, Congo. I'll be, I'll, be, I'll, be too, I'll be too fat to wear anything like that. I would look like a freaking, um, you remember those TV, TV testers? The, those lines coming down? Yeah. Oh. They go in circles? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the, is it the, the Doppler effect. <laughs> oh. I'll look like that. Yeah, but Sage, you just have to wear your pants higher. That's all. It slims you down. Mate. Mate, uh, did they know it was slimming down a treadmill? <laughs> <laughs> so these communities in Brazzaville and Kinshasa, they're on opposite banks of the Congo River, n- almost opposite, like opposite each other. Mm. They both have these sapeurs, very different styles. Le, the Brazzaville La Sap is mainly French, uh, a French sort of style. The Kinshasa one is Anything goes. They got Japanese Yamamoto coats to kilts, like Scottish kilts. But basically, it's a tradition that's passed down through the male line usually. Yeah. Um, however, women have been, you know, owning owning sapus sapuses. They've been sort of saying, you know, reverse of power dynamics. What's the we can do of this sapus? as well. Sapu. I'm not sure. Have I'm a look. look is Cong is, is, is the Congolese a part of like a French Republic or something? French part? Um, maybe, maybe. Because yeah. because even even a lot of the artwork, like even the buildings, yeah, like this, you think of most like an old school kind of France kind of thing. I was Belgium. thinking Cuban, Bel- Belgium uh, mm. reigned over Cong- Congo yeah. for a long time. It's a pretty oh, bad right. bad part of history. Like it's, it's, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very European feel. Well, these sappers or la sap, it's basically a defiance of circumstance. Mm. And that's what this photographer wanted to sort of highlight that through the, you know, they're living on, they've got dirt roads and everything around them, but they are dressing at their best. Yeah. 
Apparently, the way you look in Congo is quite a big thing. Farm? So like yeah, that's strength. really cool. There's, there's a picture with uh, like a caption about what the guy's wearing. And when yeah. I say this, I'm not one way or the other. I don't know how to feel about this. And not to say like mm. that's a negative or positive. I just don't know how mm-hmm. to feel about this. Mm-hmm. With the, it's the picture of the guy with the yellow trousers, green waistcoat, yellow shirt, orange jacket, top hat. Well, is it a top hat? No, it's not a top hat. Oh, like yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it looks like a top hat. It looks like a top hat. Um, no, yeah. And the guy is with the children following him in this clearly, like, the, uh, you know, malformed road with this burnt out old car next to him. And then it says he's yeah. wearing jacket by Altino, don't know, trousers by Pure Catone. Waistcoat by Zara, shirt by T.M. Lewin. Now, I can't afford T.M. Lewin shirts. Hat from Italy, glasses from Prada, watch by Cartier, locally made pipe, socks by Folk and Westbury shoes. I, like, I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't know the circumstances that lead to this situation, but I don't get it. Like, I don't, I don't know how to, is that a good or a bad thing? I don't understand, I don't know, yeah, I don't know how to feel. I, I just thought it looked creepy with like the, the the guy looked like the Pied Piper of children. He does he look was, a little Willy Wonka-ish. Who? Which one? Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. okay. It, it looks a bit creep. It looks a bit creepy. Yeah. That's it. A lot of like, the outfits I, you've got Pierre Card Card Cardin. You've got um, Christian Dior, Prada. That's the thing. I, I I really like the style and I like the way it looks and I like the idea yeah. of challenging your circumstances. But I don't get. Are these people part of these communities? Yeah. Or are they, well, or are they, are they coming it, from out, outside of this community from an, no, a, I think, other, another near community and coming in? Well, it says it's passed down through the... through the, It's like a tradition passed down and they're from those communities. But I don't know. I'd have to look more into it because I don't understand how they afford it either because apparently they do have day jobs. Like some are taxi drivers, tailors, gardeners. And then as soon as they're finished their, their job, they turn into these dandies i guess they say that true sapology is more more than expensive labels it lies in the art to put together an, an elegant look that's unique to the personality basically I so, like, I, culturally i like it feasibility yeah. wise i don't get it it says that yeah, the like, what? If you can't afford to eat, you shouldn't be buying these shoes that's okay so one of the lines is we prefer to dress dress well than eat in the Congo, like they that they have like this, you know, you prefer to dress well than eat well. But this says um, the gross national income per capita for the Democratic Republic of the Congo on the opposite bank of the Congo River from Brazzaville was nine hundred dollars in two thousand and eighteen, which puts the pers- purchase of thirteen hundred crocodile skin shoes into perspective. So I don't know. I would. I tell you what. I'd love no, to. Like I can't. I can't. I can't hear about three and a half grand. I would. Mm. I'd love to speak to a Congolese person to see what they think about this kind of thing. About these dandies. Yeah, that'd be interesting. And also, if they're walking through the streets, you'd feel. Would do they get like robbed? No, they're looked up to. Mm. They looked up to like. Oh, I, I want to. You. I want to be like that. Yeah. I don't think they. Uh, I think they have yeah, a but status. Hold on, hold on. If you're hungry and someone's walking around with a three and a half, four thousand dollar watch, yeah, who are you selling you it to? Siege. To, to yeah, yeah. Who are you selling it oh, to? Oh yeah, good point. <laughs> oh yeah, good point. I didn't figure that to be honest with you. Also, a lot of this stuff might be donated, and they That's and what, they uh, to continue on this wonder. sort of line. I do wonder something like that. That's why I say, like, I don't know how to feel about it because I, I genuinely don't know enough about it, but it, it does strike me as odd. But, they like, might from just... a cultural and visual standpoint, I love it. Like, it looks fantastic. I it love the outfits so cool. they put together. It's like mm. art, really, eh? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Especially the backgrounds it that looks they... Like of, it looks like one of those old-school pictures. Yeah. Like, um, like an old-school painting. These cool suits and shit. Yeah. And derelict backgrounds i actually did i, I do like it i'd say cj from now on we're going to be um the australian version of dandies i can't afford a three and a half thousand four half thousand dollar watch <laughs> so it says there was an article um that said the saperism is associated with hard-working middle-class men who are happy to save up their well-earned francs to afford these expensive outfits 
So I guess they just save up, save up, save up. And yeah, more than eat well, eat well, eat well. <laughs> and then... I'll, I'll, I'll continue my way of eating well, eating well, <laughs> eating well. But I guess, and... uh, so it's also difficult for us to translate this because of the circumstances are different. I understand, obviously, you know, the, the eat well thing, fine. But if you're in a situation where you you, you don't have ipads that you're going to be buying you don't have playstations that you're going to be buying like there's it i guess it's harder for us to understand because there's more things for us to spend money on as well mm. yeah like there's probably yeah, just there's if, less like, thing if it, like if you're going to save your if money it came to a choice if it came a choice of eating well i mean look the they're alive they're, they're guess, all, guess guess what i'll be rubbing my belly with that stuff. they're alive they're obviously eating well enough to be alive you know what i mean like they're not and a, f- a few of them are quite a few of them are quite eat, eat well is very su- eat well is very subjective they might just be meaning like they don't need to eat the nicest of foods it doesn't mean that they're not eating like having a good uh, sensible diet or whatever but like yeah i guess for us is we have a lot more things to be able to spend our money on so the idea of spending that much on one thing is a lot harder mm. to grasp yeah can I just say that this subculture it was influenced heavily by the 18th and 19th century dandyism, which saw British and French middle class men place particular focus on their dress, posture and language in an attempt to appear of a higher class. And they saw it in the Congo as a, a, a way or a sign of taking control of their destinies. I, I like it. I'd like it. I'd love. I'd love to give a shit about putting suits on and that, but I just don't care. <laughs> I'd really love. Lo- no, I, like, I think um, I can count on one hand how many like, times I've seen you in a suit. <laughs> one was the wedding. Maybe that's that's the one. Maybe. <laughs> maybe that's the one. I've been to other weddings with you. Anyways, I think uh, I think that's it for the week. Yep. <laughs> Uh, I, I think, think it's I'm the way that they've done their la- answers. Find love, right Alexander. All right, find love. Emma, we're ending the podcast. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> uh, what did we, what did we talk about? Pretty crazy. Ah, oh, wow. Well, okay. We talked about some sappers and yes. some uh, we, some some uh, we, butterfly effects. We, 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 talk, we talked about your new venture in life we, and, and your new wife. We spoke about Hopefully, you guys are happy. Are we invited to the wedding? What was? Oh, we talked about your noodles. I have to go try your noodles. Noodles. Migarang. Yes, we talked about. We Remember spoke about. Remember silence. The uh, the government scandal in uh, Netherlands. Google. Yeah. Google. So many Google. things. Yeah, oh, so the the short squeeze issue. The short squeeze. GameStop. Oh yeah. Too many things. Too many things. All right, everyone, say goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Ciao. Everyone. Ciao for now. Arrivederci. Sayonara.